let's talk about the Singapore campus of James Cook University. In this video, I will cover three areas. First, the variety of programs and the pathways. Next, the intakes. And lastly, how JCU is different from third-party education providers. Let's start with the Pre-University Foundation program. It's a full-time program that is eight months long and is designed to prepare those who don't have a full IB diploma, a polytechnic diploma, or GCE A-levels to succeed when they progress on to the undergraduate programs at JCU. To gain entry into the program, you need five GCE O-levels with a minimum C grade, a higher NITEC, NITEC with two years of work experience plus an interview, the IB Middle Years program with a minimum of 32 points. JCU also offers an extended version of the Pre-University Foundation program which is 12 months long and has slightly lower entry requirements. Now let's move on to the undergraduate programs. Starting with the School of Social and Health Sciences, these are the programs offered. The flagship programs in this school will be the Bachelor of Psychological Science and the Bachelor of Education, Early Childhood Education. Many of you looking at this list now might be thinking, what's the difference between all the psychology programs listed? So the difference between the Bachelor of Psychological Science and the Bachelor of Arts is that the Psychological Science program has a fixed core of 20 subjects among the 24, and three of the subjects are in statistics. The Honours program and the Graduate Diploma are fourth-year programs. That means they are one year long and you must first complete the Bachelor of Psychological Science. Those of you with the goal of becoming a registered clinical psychologist should start with a Bachelor of Psychological Science before moving on to the fourth year programs and subsequently completing JCU's Master of Psychology Clinical. Moving on to the business school, these are the programs offered. There's a Bachelor of Economics and a Bachelor of Tourism, Hospitality and Events, and also a hybrid science business program that is the Bachelor of Business and Environmental Science, which also comes with a major in aquaculture. But at the core of the business school are the Bachelor of Business and Bachelor of Commerce programs that come with many majors for you to choose from. Then we have the School of Science and Technology. There's the Bachelor of IT, Bachelor of Cybersecurity, and a Bachelor of Science, where there is a specialization in aquaculture, science, and technology, which is more in-depth than the hybrid program mentioned earlier. So let's now talk about the pathways available to you after the different levels. Those with O-levels or higher NITEC or NITEC qualifications enroll via the Pre-University Foundation program or the extended version, which is eight or 12 months long, and then move on to an undergraduate degree, which is 24 months. Those with A-levels or polytechnic diploma may enroll directly into an undergraduate program, which is 24 months long, but polytechnic diploma graduates may get subject exemptions. Now, the reason JCU can offer a degree in 24 months or two years instead of a typical three to four years is because of two things. First, Australian universities usually separate the undergraduate degree from the honours year. The honours year is a separate year of study where students have to plan a research project and produce a thesis. Second, the university is run on a trimester system. For a typical three-year undergraduate program that runs on a semester system, it's usually broken down into two semesters, which are about six months long. While a trimester is broken down into three terms, each lasting four months. As you can see from the image, since you do four subjects per trimester and there are three trimesters a year, you do 12 subjects every year, allowing you to complete the 24 subjects in two years. Whereas in the semester system, you still do four subjects per semester, but only have two semesters a year for a total of eight subjects each year. That's why it takes three years. And because of this trimester system, JCU has intakes every March, July, and November. International students and non-Singaporean residents will need to apply at least two months before the intake commences, as the student pass applications will take some time. Locals and Singapore residents have more leeway and can apply at least one month before the intake begins. So now let's talk about the JCU difference. As you can see here, these are the accolades that James Cook University pushes, but I'll leave it to you to decide if it's important for you. You may not experience or benefit directly from all these accolades, but here are things that will have a bigger impact. The first is the direct university experience. James Cook University's Singapore campus is fully owned and run by James Cook University. You'll notice that it clearly uses the word university in the name. This is in contrast to other institutions that function as a third-party education provider where they'll use words like institute or academy and avoid calling themselves a university. This means that all staff within JCU Singapore campus solely focus on supporting students in JCU's curriculum and administrative functions. 
As a university, James Cook University hires full-time teaching staff with PhDs, and they have to be research active. They are also based in Singapore, so you won't have a disjointed experience of having the initial lectures being taught by someone who is flown in from overseas and then get replaced by someone else when they fly out. To be fair though, JCU also hires sessional lecturers who may not have PhDs, but have substantial up-to-date work experience. But besides your lecturer, JCU also has a team of learning advisors in the learning center. They provide guidance and support when it comes to your studies, helping you with academic writing and statistics. And being an Australian university, the assessment in JCU isn't 100% examinations based. Lessons are a mix of lectures, tutorials, and field trips where applicable. And you'll be assessed based on both coursework examinations, and projects. Lastly, as a direct university, JSU has its own campus. That gives the university more flexibility in terms of being able to open 24-7 during the exam period, providing students with a conducive place to study. However, this really depends on whether you see this as a plus point. Perhaps you prefer a campus that's located in the city, that's maybe located in a shopping mall for the easy connectivity to an MRT station, and easy access to restaurants within a fully air-conditioned building. With that, I hope you now have a better understanding of James Cook University in Singapore.